going on, everyone? So D'Angelo Russell is a real question mark, right? Based on all the reports I could see for D'Lo, uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves aren't interested in retaining him, that they're not going to extend him, and very likely he's going to enter free agency. Uh, the reason I think this is interesting is because I don't know where he would land. Right? Like, and I don't think D'Lo's going to get anywhere close to the money that he's getting right now. Currently, he's making, you know, $31 million, a little over that. I don't know if he would get more than like $15 million. And it's not even that, like, he's not worth it. Like, I think he could realistically be a, a 20 to $25 million guy just based on the salaries today. Uh, this season, even, he's averaging 17 points a game. He's shooting, you know, 36% from three. Uh, he's he's a solid guy, right? He's a playmaker. He could do multiple things. He's kind of the, the weird, awkward, odd man out with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, and the Timberwolves have, like, an insane stat the last few seasons where, like, if D'Lo scores over 20 uh, they actually win the game like 90% of the time. So he is a huge contributor, but they went and traded for, you know, Rudy Gobert and that didn't make any sense. And now Minnesota is just kind of like all over the place in shambles. D'Lo is kind of like the, this odd man out and like, yeah, he's a good three point shooter, but he's not like that elite to where it makes sense. Right. He's not like a 45% three point shooter or something crazy like that. Right. So D'Lo is good, but just in the situation, I don't think it's a good situation. I think Minnesota sees that and they're willing to just let him go. But if you look at the landscape in the offseason, all of the, the teams that have money to pay him are all like rebuilding teams that wouldn't want him. Like D'Lo's still very young, right? He's only 26, but like Indiana, they have math around. Like why would they want to go get him? Not just that, but they have Buddy Hilde and stuff like that. Like Detroit, they're not going to want him. Uh, you know, the Spurs, why would the Spurs want him? All of these teams that are these young teams, they're not really going to want to pay D'Lo a bunch of money. I mean, maybe, maybe one of them will. Realistically, I don't think that he's going to get a contract that he would want to get. And any contending team, they don't really have money to give him money, right? They don't have a bunch of salary space to go and give D'Lo 20 plus million dollars. So I don't, I think it's going to be really tough for him to find a spot that would be payable. Now, if you could get him at like 15 million, then I think that that's a huge steal. So here's kind of my thoughts, right? Two things that I want to, to propose to all of you, and then hear your thoughts and opinions. Of course, you know, this is just, as always, a discussion, right? So one thing that they could do is you could go and trade for D'Lo, right? There's all the reports about Patrick Beverly really wanting to return to Minnesota. Like if he gets traded and bought out, that's where he's heading, Minnesota. I mean, there was a report a couple days ago that said that Patrick Beverly really, really, really something like that wants to go to, to Minnesota, right? So if he wants to return to Minnesota, why not trade him back to Minnesota? He can be traded to Minnesota now because uh, the Spurs, or sorry, the Utah Jazz ended up trading uh, him to the Lakers. So now you've had that, that skip so he could be sent back. So you could take Patrick Beverly, Kendrick Nunn, uh, Lonnie Walker, and you'd have to include either JTA or Damian Jones. Ideally, I'd try to unload Damian Jones because he's got the two-year deal. Uh, but if you could, you could take those four, and that's enough money to get you uh, D'Angelo Russell. So you send Pat Bev where he wants to go. Minnesota might actually benefit from Pat Bev tremendously. He was great for Minnesota. Uh, his win shares were great for Minnesota. So he might actually kind of get back to what they need him to be. Uh, Minnesota might actually benefit from having him back. They could always re-sign him to a smaller deal uh, after this season. On top of that, you get Lonnie Walker, who could be a young piece that could be on the bench or, you know, start or whatever. Or if you want, just let him go. You're going to lose him anyway. My only problem is draft compensation, right? Like, I wouldn't mind D'Lo back on the Lakers. I, I do. I think he would be solid, especially if you could keep Russell Westbrook. I think D'Lo, Russ, LeBron, and AD would be nice, right? D'Lo as your third option for the Lakers in the starting lineup, I think would be fantastic, right? A, a guy that could play on the ball, off the ball, could be your facilitator, could do whatever, you know, Mr. Ice in his veins, so he, he can close out all of the, like, I think he would actually really thrive with the Lakers, and I think he'd be a good addition. He, it's not my favorite thing. Like, I still prefer, like, the depth route, right? Like, I still really prefer, 
you know, the, the Hornets trade or even maybe the Spurs trade, stuff like that. But like, let's say there's not really any valuable deals out there and there's not really anything that makes sense. You're not getting Bradley Beal. You're not getting some star. So the next best thing might be D'Lo. A guy that could give you, you know, 17 to 20 a night. Like he's giving you 17 a night and he's arguably the fourth option on, on the Timberwolves. So for him to get to 20 a night with LeBron James and AD, I don't think is unrealistic. And to be that consistent scorer, that consistent shooter. Um, you know, I, I would I would like to see D'Lo back in the purple and gold. I know he had the controversy, right? The whole snitch, don't be a snitch. That, that he learned a lesson. But he's more mature. He's older. He's wiser. He's smarter. He's a better basketball player. And everybody that was involved in that is all gone. So you don't have to worry about the chemistry or anything anymore. It's not like you have all the players that were there. None of them are there anymore, right? You don't have any of them. So it doesn't. So you could bring D'Lo in, and it's like it never happened. So I don't mind that. But draft compensation would be my only concern. I would I would not give up a first round pick for D'Lo. I wouldn't because Minnesota is very likely going to let him go. If you trade for him, you're probably going to have to give him a re, a real contract. Where if in the off season, if you wait for him in the off season, you might be able to sign him for like fifteen million, which is the other point that I wanted to kind of dive into and get your thoughts and opinions, right? So again, if you look at the landscape, I don't know where he's going to end up, and I don't know what team would be willing to pay him a bunch of money. So that really narrows down his options. Would he want to come back to the Lakers? If he does, maybe he would take like $15 million to come back to the Lakers. You know, like let's say another team is offering him, you know, let's say they offer him like $18 million. Would he take the extra $3 million discount to come back to LA? It's possible. And he's still young. He's only 26. So you could sign him to a four-year deal and he'd still only be 30, right? Like he could, he could be a real contributor. He could be a guy that you could have post LeBron and then just kind of have him around, especially if you can get him long-term on a smaller deal. I, I just, I think you sign him. Like I would, I would like if, if in the off season, if D'Lo, if there was a report that D'Lo wants to come to Lakers and the Lakers are offering him like 15, you know, like I said, like 15,000 or 15 million, uh, I would, I would do it. I really would. I would sign him for 15 million. Cause who are you going to get that that's much, that, that, that is that much better that cheap, that inexpensive. Like if he wants like 20, 25 million, I'm not, I wouldn't do that. I'd rather at that point, I'd probably rather go get Gary Trent. Um, cause I think Gary Trent might be a more sure bet and he's younger. He's three years younger, right? If you're going to have to give up like 25 million, um, or go get other pieces. But like, if you can get d for a reasonable price, cause then you could still keep like Russ and you'd still have money to go. So like that, that's the big thing. And that's why like, I don't know if I, if you could do it for say, like I said, Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker, uh, Kendrick Nunn and JTA, let's say, right. And like two seconds, right. Like do Chicago's 20, 2023 and then LA's 2023, right. So you give them two seconds for d and it's like, Hey, we're not going to give you a first, but you could have the two seconds. And if they would do that, I think I'd make that trade because then you basically could have d LeBron, AD and Russ, for the next several seasons, right? Because you could you'd have the bird rights to D'Lo and you have the bird rights to Russ. So just sign them both. You're good. You know, uh, sign whoever else you can, and now you're off to the races. I, I just I, I think I think it would be worth it. Um, ideally, again, is you you wait till the off season uh, and then sign him on a cheaper deal because I think if you trade for him, you're gonna have to pay him more because you're not gonna want to run the risk of him leaving at the end of the season, right? You're not going to want to run the risk of him, uh, you know, uh, you go and trade, even though it's just two seconds. But still, I mean, you still gave up something. You know, you give up all of that. He ends up leaving because somebody, let's say, does offer him like 20, 25 million. I don't know who, but let's say somebody does. Then, you know, you basically just threw away two for two seconds. So it's you're almost better off waiting till the off season and see what, like how much, other teams are offering and see if like, Hey, you get to come back to LA. You get, you know, like you get to be, you get to play with LeBron James and AD. LeBron's only got two more years on his deal. The back end of your contract, you're, you're, you're almost the guy unless something crazy happens. You know, you kind of sell them on that. Like, you know, like you've, you're already playing third, fourth fiddle on Minnesota. 
wouldn't you rather do that with LeBron James and Anthony Davis rather than Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards? Like, I love Anthony Edwards, but he's he's not LeBron James or Anthony Davis. I just think D'Lo would be a, a solid piece. I really do. And I, I just, I think if you, I think if you don't have to give up a first in that deal, I think you do it. Because you could have both your first. And, like, let's say in the offseason, let's say the the Nets end up wanting to blow it up, right? Like, you know, let's say they're like, KD wants out again, Kyrie wants to leave again, everyone wants Kyrie back to the Lakers, let's say the Lakers want Kyrie, well, you could trade him back to Brooklyn, right? Because he's still 26, and if you're and if you're the Nets, better to get D'Lo than nothing, right? Better to go get D'Angelo Russell and get him back than just lose Kyrie for nothing, right? So you could do you could do D'Lo, do like work out a sign and trade, especially if you extend him early, work out some deal, I don't know. I think it would give you options. And then worst case, you'd still have both your first and you'd have D'Angelo Russell to go do a deal. So let's say, you know, let's say uh, for whatever, like a Damian Lillard or something like that wants out next season. Well, you could take both first and you could take D'Lo, go get Damian Lillard. Especially if you could get D'Lo on a, a reasonable contract. Like, like let's say you did trade for him. You were able to keep both first and then you ended up, uh, you ended up like, signing him to let's say 25 million a year like that's a reasonable deal especially with the cap spike about to go up i i, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world to, to take a look at Delo. it's just it's not something i really even thought or really considered much um the only reason i even thought about this was because i uh i did a video there was a report about miami wanting to trade for d'angelo russell and i was like well one i don't see miami being able to do that and two um like like, where is he going to go in the offseason? It's just kind of sparked this, like, I wonder if the Lakers should take a look at D'Lo. Like, I don't think D'Lo would be bad. I mean, obviously, defensively, he isn't great. But still, I, I think he'd be good enough. I think he'd be solid. Like, you could have have Dennis Schroeder and him in the in the, in the the backcourt, LeBron and AD, and then whomever. Granted, I, I don't think you'd be able to trade for anything else because you basically would unload all of your tradable guys to go get him, but you get to keep Russ. Russ has been great. You get that third option that the Lakers really seem to want. He could play next to LeBron. He could play next to Russ. Uh, you know, he could uh, orchestrate the offense if you want him to. He can just go get a bucket for you, right? Like, that's something the Lakers really need. Lakers don't really have a guy that can just go get a bucket, right? Just go score, knock it down from the mid-range, knock it down from the three, you know, give you a little step back, whatever, right? Like, that's something the Lakers really lack. You know, like Walker can go get a bucket, but like he has to work for his, he uses his athleticism. It's usually at the rim, right? Or LeBron setting him up. LeBron, he can go get a bucket, but he's not shooting the ball very well. And his is more at the rim. Russ is more at the rim. AD kind of needs some setup, right? Like, you know, occasionally he can come and bring it down, but they don't have like that guard that can just go and go get a bucket. Dennis Schroeder can at times, but he's not great at it. Like I would, I would rather see D'Lo going and operating and, and, you know, moving around those screens and, and pulling up from the mid range or pulling up from three or give you a step back, like whatever, something like that. Like I just, I, I would prefer that, but I don't know. Was, like I said, it was just an interesting thought. It was just something that came to mind that I wanted to make a video on and hear all your thoughts and opinions. So let me know. What do you think? Would you do it? Would you not? Would you, would you rather sign D'Lo? Would you rather trade for D'Lo? If you didn't have to give up the first, would you trade for D'Lo now? Or would you rather want to wait? And and maybe try to sign him for like I said, fifteen, eighteen million in the in the off season. You know, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, let me.